welcome to my studio compound. Thank you. It's very nice to have you here Thank and you. to be here on this sparkly day. Yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful day. So, um, people when they come to visit are curious about how this place came about. And I was lucky to buy the land when it was still much more affordable than it is now. It's being developed a lot. I'm married to an architect named Cameron Armstrong and he built all three of these structures that you can see. I love the energy of the two buildings and the way these, um, these corners kind of talk to each other. Mm -hmm. Let's go in and look at the inside. I'll talk about awesome. that a little bit. Sounds great. I love having this much space. I feel very lucky and, you know, really I had to work with teaching and all sorts of things for decades and not, I haven't just always had this. These bays are about 20 feet and we were going to just do three. But then we decided, well, we have the space, maybe go ahead and add one more bay, so it's four. So we have almost 3,000 square feet here. Part of the plan Cameron came up with were these movable boxes that are storage boxes for the artwork. Let's proceed to the back and look, look around a little bit. Cool. This is the library, and generally I have a lot of energy back here for works on paper and these big tables. I do a lot of drawing, most of the drawing back here. I'm just trying to take it all in here. <laughs> There's a lot. Yeah, the light is amazing. Cameron's really good with natural light. I think it's, it's a, a real treat to have all this, the windows all across. Okay, let's see some drawings. Okie doke. I'll start with this group. They're on a translucent vellum and mm -hmm. they're a little bit older. They're from, looks like 2007. But it's unusual for me to have imagery that you can name and mm -hmm. point to. Now the next group of paper pieces we'll look at are on this paper I find very appealing to work on and it's made from marble dust. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I can see from the paper, it's almost like Venetian plaster. Yes. Like the way the light's catching it. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. This is the same paper that I did the 100 foot long drawing on. Okay. Well, also, I think it's interesting, you know, talking about the things in the studio that I look at and mm -hmm. use and work. These are two uh, Native American scraper tools that my mother found in the 80s at the Moody Ranch, which is right at the beginning of West Texas, but you can see that I'm looking at these and drawing them in this piece. So you can kind of, that's looking come this way. And, come and look at this when you get a second. Um, okay. So, so you can kind of see. Here, I'll go back to the beginning okay. here. Okay, we're at the I beginning. The model. So here's the model of this gallery space, which mm -hmm. is quite large. Mm -hmm. So this area here is this hallway. That would Great. be that wall. Great. This one is like this wall. From floor to the top of the wall is 13.2, but there is like a... Like this slope. Yeah, there's a little bit of a slope. So actually the, the room itself is just over 16 feet of height. Wow. It. So it's pretty pretty good do you all have vitrines or oh, yeah. shelves and things because I do have some sculpture too okay which we could think about we do yeah. we have quite a few it might be interesting to do floating shelves and have some of my things I look at in the studio like all these bones and turtle shells and... Mm -hmm. yeah I don't know what's the easiest for you where we should start? Like looking at work or? Also just ask you this. I think what, you, what I saw there looks good because everything's got so much space around it. So it's a question of, you know, density of hanging versus 
that sort of lovely generosity of the space. And I'm going to leave that up to you. Yeah, with somebody like you, yeah, we would definitely want like breathing room and space and to see mm -hmm. the work. Cool. Well, so the reason I was asking that is one thing we could do is start by talking about these small pieces that are on the wall now. Okay. And I have probably 60 little paintings and it could be if you wanted some area could have a sort of salon style of small pieces mm -hmm. that communicate something. Can we get out small things? Yeah, let's. Okay. Why don't we start talking um, about what's already on the wall here? This one on the I'm right. Say, yeah, that one looks a little different than these three. Mm -hmm. It feels more like you're falling into a place to me, like a bird diving down into a place. Yeah, these have, a, to me, a little more of an uh, ethereal... And that's more like my work has evolved into that, more spacious mm -hmm. and more about consciousness. I've been interested in um, the question of what intuition means. And I like what Jung said. He said something like it, it has to do with bringing forward imagery and meaning from the unconscious. And I think as I've developed, I've gotten more and more interested in that as part of my subject. So I guess the next step is to pull out, pull out one of those one. giant paintings. Ooh -wee. And you probably need to go all the way to this particular. It's got 21 feet, so it should lean on the beams. Yeah. Oh, I like it. Yeah, I love this painting. Yeah, you'll need an 18 wheeler for this one. Yeah. So it's called the Sotol View, which is a particular place in the National Park of Big Bend, which is down where Texas goes dipping down, you know, it's in this mm -hmm. part. And then these vertical lines really represent the Sotol plant, which is a reedy cactus, kind of like these tall spike, spiky things that maybe look like a cactus version of a cattail. For any of your works, like, is there a period of time that it takes to evolve into what you think is finished? Sure. It, it's sort of that idea I was talking about earlier about the decades of work and knowledge that you get through work mm -hmm. and, and living with the work and trying to decide when something's finished. It's when it rings right to you. And it seems to me every artist will have a completely different stopping point or pushing on point. And um, well, it can also vary so dramatically from. Yeah. Interesting to think about the line in this when we're looking at the, the drawings on the mineral paper, I think. Some of that fast line. I like the way you feel my hand in places and pushing. It feels very uh, immediate with the artist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I, I like it.
I love watching people paint. I think that's why Bob Ross has lived on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just fun to watch things change before your very eyes. <laughs>